Good morning, church. You're all spread out today. It's like the parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> Call to worship is Psalm 134. It says, Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who is the maker of heaven and earth. So I command that blessing over you today. You are the servants of the Lord. And your worship today ministers to the Lord. What an awesome privilege you guys have today. Amen. Let's stand together. We'll open a word of prayer. And then we will minister unto the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we can be in the house of the Lord. And that we can minister to you. And Lord, we thank you for the rest of that promise as well. Lord, it says, you will bless us from Zion. So Lord, send your blessing upon your people today. Lord, may each one that has come today leave this sanctuary a different person because they have met with you, Lord, in a very real way. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's worship together. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, gather together, lift up your name, call on our Savior, fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering, as the saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you lifted on your wings And the world will see that Our God saves Our God saves There is hope In your name In the name of the Father In the name of the Father In the name of the Son in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, gather together, lift up your name, call on our Savior, call on your grace. Here we go. Hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that. Our God says, our God says, there is more in your name. Morning turns to songs of praise. Our God says, our God says, Father, here we go. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, gather together, lift up your name, call on our Savior, call on your grace. Sing it, church. Hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you, lifted on your wings. And the world will see that, the world will see that, yes, the world will see that, our God says, our God says, there is hope in your name, morning turns to songs of praise. Our God saves, our God saves, our God saves, hallelujah, praise you Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful with the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the found in the desert place. So I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing. 
Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just bless, bless the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I will worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord. Here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I will worship Your holy name. Verse two. You're rich in love, and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord. 
bless the Lord of oh my soul oh, oh, oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul I will worship your holy name before we sing the last verse I had a meeting with somebody the other day and we were talking about self-esteem and the common thing that everybody says today is that you just keep saying good things to yourself over and over again and eventually you believe it well that kind of works but the better way for self-esteem is to look at the things that the concrete things that you've actually done so when you've gotten up out of bed and made your bed or done things that you wanted to do finish the tasks and stuff like that and to look back at them and say when that nagging voice in your head says you know you're really lazy you're not a good person you can look back and say well the evidence says that the opposite so you can look at your life and you can say you know what I keep my promises to myself well this song is about the promises that God has made with you and that he's kept. So you want to believe that God loves you? Look at the evidence. You want to believe that he cares for you? Look at the evidence. Look at the times when you were down and he picked you up. When you wanted to give up and he sent a friend to be there for you. When you came to church and you were empty and all of a sudden there was a word from the pulpit exactly what you needed to touch your heart, a word in due season from a friend. So instead of saying, you know, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me, I want you to look at the evidence this morning. He loves you, he's proved it, he's been faithful. And so we can sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I will worship his holy name. Think about what he's done. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I will worship your holy name. Verse 3. On that day. And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near. And my time has come, my soul will still, still my soul will sing your praise unending. How long? Ten thousand years and then forevermore, forevermore. Sing it, church. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I will worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I will worship your holy name, I will worship your holy name. We worship you, Jesus, for your goodness and your kindness, for your love, for your faithfulness how you met our needs in so many ways. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Amen. We started out saying we can minister unto the Lord with our worship. And I believe you've, you've done that already this morning. Uh, and it's quite a concept, isn't it, that little old me can minister to the Lord right? The creator of all things. What a wonderful privilege he's given us. 
A couple of announcements for you today. Just a reminder, right after the service, uh, we have our annual business meeting. So if you're able to stick around for that, we would sure appreciate that. We try and keep it as uh, short as possible. So maybe half an hour or so, uh, Lord willing, and uh, we'll be all done with that. So again, uh, particularly members, we ask you to stay behind for that. As well, at 3 o'clock today, there's a celebration of praise service at Dresden Christian Reformed Church. And uh, it's sponsored by the ministerial, and so we invite you all to come if you're available um, to do that as well. Uh, offering plate is at the back this morning. If you would like to give that way, just drop uh, your offering in the plate. Or you can give by email transfer at evangelchurch at bellnet.ca. Uh, also, a couple things going on this week. Wednesday, 12 o'clock, is the first of the Lenten lunches that the ministerial is sponsoring. Uh, what is a Lenten lunch? Well, uh, we have the churches make soup, and uh, for a donation, um, we recommend $5 or so, but whatever. And uh, all the money that we raise over the next uh, five weeks will go to support our uh, compassion-sponsored children that the ministerial has. We have two of them. Uh, you also um, be blessed with a short message and a little bit of worship time as well. And so that's Wednesday, 1 o'clock, and that is at North Dresden Baptist Church. And so you've got to keep all these churches straight in your mind. And then on Thursday, uh, just a reminder, our season of prayer and fasting has commenced. And folks, I was thrilled to find out that 13 of you said, uh, Pastor, we're going to pray and fast and believe on Thursdays for God to do powerful things. Amen. Thank you for your partnership in this. And if um, you would still like to be part of that, it's not too late. And so there's these commitment cards at the back. Fill one out, drop it uh, in the offering plate there, give it to me. And uh, you can join our team of prayer and fasters. We'll let you remain seated as we continue to worship this morning. I love you, Lord. For oh, your mercy never fails and all my days been held in your hands. The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing the goodness of God all my life. Two. Here we go. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived the goodness of God. All my life, all my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, I will sing the goodness of God. Here we go, your goodness. Your goodness is running after me, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after me, it's running after me. My life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me, it's running after me all my life. All my life you have been faithful. goodness of God. Let's sing verse one one more time. Here we go. I love you, Lord. 
Oh, your mercy never fails in all my days. I've been held in your hands. Do you believe that? The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing the goodness of God. Sing it, church, all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing the goodness of God. I will sing the goodness of God. Has he been good to you? Has he been faithful to you? Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for all that you've done. We couldn't have made it without you. I couldn't have made it without you. You're the one that I would never, ever, ever want to do without. You hold my life in your hands and my eternal life in your hands. You are the most powerful being in the universe, yet you are the most loving being in the universe. You are the most kindest and long-suffering. And although you are justice, your desire is that no one would perish. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good God. We worship you this morning. We worship you. I want you to praise him this morning and just trust him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Have faith, trust him, worship him even in the storm. He's near, he's near to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shoot Jesus, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus, all for Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. All for Jesus, all I am and have, and ever hope to be. Jesus, Jesus, all for Jesus. ambitions all of my ambitions hopes and plans I surrender I surrender these into your hands all of my Ambitions, hopes, and plans, I surrender these into your hands. For it's only, for it's only in your Jesus. Jesus. 
Let's talk to him this morning. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for laying down your life on Calvary's cross for us. Thank you for saving us from our sins. And Lord, we say this morning that we want to lay down our lives for you and for your cause. And Lord, we pray that by your Spirit you would help us to be all that you have called us to be. So Jesus, we say it once more today. All for you. All for you. All, all of our worship is all for you. Lord, all that we do and say and think, all that we are, it's all for you. So Lord, just help us to get our priorities right understand that all of this earthly life it's all for Jesus it's all that we could become a little bit more like you Lord be conformed to your image and Lord be the people of God that you have called us to be so Lord we pray this morning that even through this message there would be a, a little molding and a little bit of shaping to help us to be formed into that image. So Jesus, once more, we say, all for you. This is all for you. This is why we live. This is why we're in this place this morning. So Lord, do your work in our hearts and lives by your spirit today. We pray it in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's get our Bibles out this morning. We have a little something that we, we like to say. We like to pledge uh, before the sermon. And so uh, find a Bible, lift it up, and let's say this together. It's on the screen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same, never, never, never. I will never be the same, in Jesus' name, amen. My message this morning is entitled, Alive Again. Start out with a, a little illustration. Um, Beethoven died in 1827. He was buried in Vienna. And a Taurus went to visit his grave, and he found it to be a deeply, deeply moving experience. And as they, they stood at the gravestone, they could hear music. And it was Beethoven's music, only it wasn't quite right. There was, there was something wrong about it. And, and then the Taurus realized that Beethoven's music was being played backwards. And so he saw a gardener in the cemetery, and he asked him, and he says, what's going on? And the gardener replied, Oh, that's just Beethoven decomposing. <laughs> I've got more. I've got more. 
uh, here's some humorous tombstones. Um, uh, they're inscriptions, and these have been found all over the place. Harry Edsel Smith of Albany, New York, born 2003, died 1942. Looked up the elevator shaft to see if a car was on the way down. It was. In Thurmont, Maryland, there's a cemetery, and it says, Here lies an atheist, all dressed up with no place to go. <laughs> In Ribesford, England, there's a cemetery. Uh, and at the burial spot of Anna Wallace, it says, The children of Israel wanted bread, and the Lord sent them manna. Old clerk Wallace wanted a wife, and the devil sent him Anna. <laughs> Ouch! And <laughs> in Uniontown, Pennsylvania Cemetery, it says, Here lies the body of Jonathan Blake, stepped on the gas instead of the brake. <laughs> in a cemetery in Hartscombe, England, it says, On the 22nd of June, Jonathan Fiddle went out of tune. In a cemetery, another cemetery in England, it says, Remember, man, as you walk by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so shall you be. Remember this and follow me. To which someone replied by writing on the tombstone, To follow you, I'll not consent until I know which way you went. <laughs> Great advice there. All right, I'll get serious. Today's scripture reading is taken from... Um, well, really, it takes us to a cemetery of sorts. And so to be more specific, it was a valley of dry bones. And so follow along with me in Ezekiel 37. We'll start out by reading the first three verses. We'll cover uh, a few more later on. It'll also be on the screen if you want to follow along that way. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and that's Ezekiel speaking, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And so let's take a look at the background of the scripture. Uh, God had called his people, Israel, out of captivity in Egypt. They had been there for over a hundred years. They had been in um, this slavery, this awful situation, and God brought them to the promised land. And he gave them a land, and he gave them a king, and he made them into a, a great nation. But they turned against God, and God allowed them to go back into captivity again, this time under Nebuchadnezzar and his uh, Babylonian army that invaded Israel. They had reduced Solomon's temple to ashes, they had taken many of the Jewish people back to Babylon as captives as well. And among these captives was a young priest by the name of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel relayed the message of God's judgment to the captives. And he warned the people of the destruction that was to come. Uh, Israel did indeed fall. The nation of Israel seemed all but dead, but, but in the midst of all of this, God has this vision that he gives to Ezekiel. And at first it would seem all hope is lost. In Ezekiel's vision, he's, he's carried to this valley, and it's filled with bones. And these bones were old and, and dry, and they literally covered the desert floor. The signs of death were everywhere. And so God asks Ezekiel, he says, Son of man, can these bones live? To which Ezekiel replied, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And so God, he showed Ezekiel, which basically was a hopeless situation. It obviously symbolized what had happened to the nation of Israel. Was there any chance that this nation could be right again, that they could rise again? Written over the whole situation in large letters is the word, impossibility. And maybe this describes some of you here this morning. And as you look around, you all seems hopeless. Everything seems to have gone wrong. And your life is a mess, or at least it's, it's not what you want it to be. And you see yourself in a valley of dead, dry bones. You don't see much hope. It's hard to imagine that those dead, dry bones can come back to life again. 
It's hard to imagine your situation could ever get any better. It's hard to imagine life beyond your present circumstances. Ezekiel, however, he, he saw a glimmer of hope. He said, God, you have the last word in this matter. He realized that God was in control. And the same is true for every one of us. No matter what your situation, no matter what your circumstance, God gets the last word. Nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing is too difficult for Him. Maybe the phrase old dry bones, maybe it describes your spiritual life. Any spiritual vitality that you had, it seems to have been sucked right out of you. Your heart seems cold. Your worship seems dead. Your, uh, your passion for the lost is gone. Your times of prayer are just simply routine. Can these bones live again? Stay tuned. This message is for you. Old dry bones might describe the state of your health. It might describe your bank account. It might even describe a broken relationship. Can these bones live again? With God in the equation, I know that we can hope again. Amen. Old bones might describe the state of the church. Maybe uh, we haven't been too effective in sharing our faith. We believe in the extraordinary, but we see little of it. We struggle to maintain our numbers, but seem to be losing ground. Can these bones live again? Is revival possible in the Church of Canada? Amen. God may just be getting ready to do something big. One pastor, he, he used a, a different bone to describe the people in his congregation. Here's what he said. The tailbone Christian just sits and lets everybody else do the ministry in the church. The fingerbone Christian is always pointing the finger at everybody else and not taking responsibility for their actions. The jawbone Christian runs off at the mouth and spreads gossip, causes trouble, and stirs up strife. The hipbone Christian sits on his wallet and gives nothing to help financially. The wishbone Christian has a prayer life that can only be summed up in three words. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Hopefully there was something in there to offend everyone equally. <laughs> Let me end with two positives, okay? The backbone Christian has convictions, knows what they are and stands for them. The kneebone Christian realizes that victory in the Christian life comes only through a life of prayer. God's word brings us hope. God gave Ezekiel some very specific instructions. So let's pick it up in verse 4. It says, Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise. There was a rattling sound and, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. So God told Ezekiel, he says, have a little talk with these bones. He was to tell them to listen up because God had something to say. And with one breath, tendons and flesh and skin would cover these bones again. Ezekiel did as he was told and he watched in amazement as the foot bone connected to the leg bone and the leg bone connected to the knee bone and the knee bone connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bone connected to the back bone and the back bone connected to the neck bone and the neck bone connected to the head bone. You get the idea. <laughs> so what's the application here? God's word is our greatest source of hope. Amen. When you are down, when you are discouraged, and when you are dry, open your Bible and hear the word of the Lord to you. Somewhere in those pages, you'll find the words of hope 
that are going to carry you through. As you read the stories of others who trusted God, you'll be encouraged in your own journey. When you see God's character shining through the pages, you'll learn that you can trust him. While you are wondering what to do, you'll find the wisdom that you need in those pages. And even when the answers don't come, you will be comforted and the peace of God will guard your heart. Hebrews 4.12, uh, I love this scripture, tells us, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. See, medicine labels list active and inactive ingredients. Active ingredients address the problem at hand. But inactive ingredients, they're just extras, like flavoring and, and coloring. We fill our lives with active and inactive ingredients. What better cure for life's problems than the most active ingredient of all? The Bible. Amen. The Word of God is alive and active. It has a unique supernatural ability to address any problem that you might have. But just like medicine, it, it can't just be left on the shelf. Medicines must be taken to start working on the cells and tissues of the body. The Bible must be taken, not just read, but consumed, if it is to go to work in the way that God intends it. Time and time again, when I have needed to hear from God, He has spoken to me through His Word with a promise, with direction, or with hope. Amen. I can point you back to scriptures um, the Lord gave me when he called me into ministry. I, I can show you scriptures he gave me to hold on to when I was sick with cancer. I can direct you to verses of encouragement that God used to lift my spirits when, when all hope was gone. Let the word of God bring life to your valley of dry bones as well. God's spirit restores life and hope. Ezekiel noticed there was still something missing. The bones were now connected, and they were covered with flesh, but they lacked the breath of life. So let's begin at verse 9 to find out what happened. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come. Breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and they stood up on their feet. A vast army. Breath and wind are, are symbols that are used for the Holy Spirit over and over again in Scripture. The Holy Spirit is seen as the, the outbreathing of God. He is the life-giving, animating power of every believer. Wind is unseen, but it is powerful. It is penetrating. It is exhilarating. It is refreshing. And Ezekiel witnessed how the, the breath of God would bring Israel back to life again. Are you ready for God's heavenly breeze to fill your sails? It starts with salvation. It starts when we, we confess our sins and we commit our lives to Jesus Christ to follow him as Lord and Savior. And a second wind of power is what happened on the day of Pentecost. It's recorded for us in Acts 2, 2-4. It says, Suddenly the sound of the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The wind of the Spirit is rushing and it is mighty. He brings a power that will, will set your life in motion. It's time to launch your vessel. It's time to hoist your sail and be, begin to be filled, and not just once, but continually filled with the wind of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to breathe new life into you today. 
All our efforts in the kingdom are lifeless and they are powerless without the touch of God's Spirit upon them. All of our programs, all of our projects, all of our preaching, they're dead until they are energized by the Spirit of God. So the Word of God and the Spirit of God, they work in tandem to bring life out of death and victory out of defeat. And so if there was any doubt what was happening, God made it very clear to uh, Ezekiel. God's summary starts in verse 11. It says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people... I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open up your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. So Israel had rebelled against God. Many of them were carried off into exile into a foreign land. Jerusalem had fallen to the Babylonians, and their lament was, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. And in the midst of this tragedy, God gave Ezekiel this vision, this message of hope. They would again receive abundance of mercy and grace. God was going to restore them to their land. He was going to make them a nation again. The very fact that Israel even exists as a nation today defies all odds. The fulfillment of this prophecy is ongoing. Israel is currently being regathered from the the four corners of the earth Since 1948, Israel has been in the process of being put back together as a nation. The number of Jews still being regathered to Israel is growing almost daily. The historical account of Israel reminds us that there is always hope for our future when God is in it. John Maxwell, he writes these words about hope. He says, hope shines brightest when the hour is darkest. Hope motivates when discouragement comes. Hope energizes when the body is tired. Hope sweetens while bitterness bites. Hope sings when all the melodies are gone. Hope believes when evidence is eliminated. Hope listens for answers when no one is talking. Hope climbs over obstacles when no one is helping. Hope endures hardship when no one is caring. Hope smiles confidently when no one is laughing. Hope reaches for answers when no one is asking. Hope presses toward victory when no one is encouraging. Hope dares to give when no one is sharing. Hope brings the victory when no one is winning. One of the most powerful, energizing words in the English language is hope. Hope is a power that keeps us going in the toughest times of life. It is a power that energizes us with excitement and anticipation as we look forward to the future. Hope gives us reason to live. It takes obstacles and it transforms them into possibilities. Hope gives us the strength and courage we need to make the most out of life. God wants hope to come alive in your heart. Ask him to breathe new life into your circumstances today. Let's bow our heads and pray. Jesus, um, he said to a man by the name of Nicodemus one time, he says, uh, he says, you must be born again. See, the fact of the matter is we are spiritually dead until we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins and to fill us with his Holy Spirit and give us new life. I wonder if there's anyone here this morning and you would confess and say, 
Pastor Rob, I can't think of a time when I have asked Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sins. I can't think of a time when I have had faith in Him as God. And this morning you say, I want to do that today. I want to have my sins forgiven. I want this new life. I want to be born again. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God. Why don't you just raise your hand to heaven this morning? Jesus says, anyone that will come to him, he will in no wise cast out. If you're listening online sometime later, you want to do the same thing, just reach out, send me an email. Say, this is what I've done today, Pastor. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those today that are reaching out in faith and saying, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I want to experience the forgiveness that your blood has purchased for me. I want to know what it's like to be your son, to be your daughter. I want to know what it's like to have this new life, to be filled with your Spirit, to be filled with hope. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're receiving people into your family today calling them your own. Lord, I'm praying for others today and hope has been lost for them. And Lord, I'm asking you to restore hope into their situation. Lord, maybe when they see it, they see a valley of dry bones and they see the word impossibility written over it. But God, you know. You know these bones can live again. You know these circumstances can change. Lord, you know that hope can come alive. And Lord, all kinds of things can be restored. Lord, health can be restored. Relationships can be restored. Finances can be restored. Lord, you can make a way to free us from, from addictions and bondages that we're in. And God, we can live again. We can live the way that you intended us to live as people free living in you, living in new hope. So God, we're asking that you would breathe upon us once more. And Lord, you would make a way where there seems to be no way. In the name of Jesus. Let's stand together. We'll close with this song this morning. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here. Stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you 
never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are Verse 3 you are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are the way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Is that who he is this morning? He knows who he is. Like Pastor Rob was saying this morning, we need to get to know who he is. When you read the word of God, that's proof. Historical proof that he answers prayer, that he keeps his promises. So you can have, instead of self-confidence, you can have God confidence. Amen? Amen. And that's even better because that doesn't shift with our emotions. Here we go. Last time, Waymaker. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Here we go. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Not just have a little hope, but may abound in hope. That's my prayer for you this morning. God bless you as you leave this place today. Our service is dismissed. Uh, if you can stay for our business meeting, we would sure appreciate it. God bless you as you leave today. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are.